Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today we're going to be looking at the fuel pump on our 2004 Mercury Tracker 40 horsepower. Now, if you've been keeping up with this one, we've been doing quite a bit of work and it's getting really close to firing this thing up for the first time. But I want to make sure that the fuel pump is up to the job. So let me go grab a couple of tools and we'll dive into this project. All right, guys really simple to pull this apart. Before we get started, speaking of parts, let's make sure that you have everything that you need to get this job done. Now with Mercury, they have one part number that encompasses all the different pieces you're gonna need to go in and rebuild them. And I've got this laid out on the table. So with this one part number, that's gonna give you everything that you're gonna need to get this project done. Now, as you can see, I've been busy working on this one because after all, we did build this one from the crankshaft up. So there's still a lot of different components that I haven't reconnected or remounted yet. So don't let that scare you thinking you have to pull yours apart this far just to get to the fuel pump, which is right there. The only thing that you need to do is disconnect this upper line, this one here, and then this one here. After that, it'll just pull off. Now we had already looked at and rebuilt the carburetor on this one because as I've mentioned before, this one pretty much had a catastrophic failure. Connecting rod decided it would go out the side of the engine case. After that, it probably sat in somebody's backyard for the better part of three or four years. And the carburetor, it didn't look that bad on the inside. And hopefully we'll have the same scenario unfold on the inside of our fuel pump. I'll tell you what, before we pull it all the way down, let's make note of how it's coming apart. So we're going to make a couple of marks here, here, and here. And we're trying to figure out what orientation it needs to go back together in. top you've got a couple of different pry points to help split it apart. Now, not bad at all. So let's finish unlayering this. A little bit sticky in there. So this was definitely worth our while. Way it makes a lot more sense when you're putting it back together. But if you do get lost, you can always refer to our exploded parts diagrams. That's going to give you a really clear picture of how things came apart, and more importantly, how they're going to go back together. Let's start by getting our check valves out, and you can tell that this is a later model unit because these are plastic or nylon like the ones we will be replacing it with. Now, if yours is an older one, you have to drill out for a larger pin set for that little retaining clip to go back in. Let's go ahead and get the spring and cap out, which we will be replacing as well. And all I'm doing is just pushing in on that center pin to release them. There's two. Yeah, that was, that's got some age on it. Go ahead and replace it. Let's go ahead and get our new check valves in there. They don't feel quite as crunchy as old, those old ones. In we go. Uh, let's go ahead and press them in. Now, according to the manual, you push this in, it'll stop, and then you break off the ends. The way mine went in, it went in like it was supposed to, flowered out the other end to where it holds it in place. And there's really nothing for me to break off. So you can look here and see where that one I took out, 
it was not sealing very well on this side. So it was definitely time to replace. Yeah, that's covering it much better. There we go. There we go. Now we've got our new spring and our plastic seat. Go ahead and get it in place. Same game, just a smaller plastic seat and a little bit smaller spring. Set it in there. Now, let's just layer it back up like it came apart. guys. Another diaphragm. And the rear plate. Alright, now. Probably don't need to use all four bolts to help guide it together just these smaller two diameter ones that actually hold it together and then the other two mount it to the engine block itself. But I had all four in there. Probably a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. There you go. Our other gasket goes here. Let's get it mounted back to the block. go around a couple of times and compress all those gaskets down to where they seal up. Well, there you go. Not a big deal. Just be methodical about how you take everything apart, lay it out in order, and it's not such a chore to get it remounted. Now, as you can tell, I still have a lot of work to do, but all you should have to do is hook up these three lines and you should be good to go. Just keep in mind, it's gonna take it a little bit longer to prime up to get the fuel in there and then reach the carburetor. Well, listen, if you need these or any other parts for your boat, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.